Saturn's moon, Titan, would not be a comfy place for Earth-like microbes, even as alien worlds go. It lacks a global ocean like the ones found on Europa and Enceladus, and it doesn't enjoy the relatively balmy climate of Mars. But it does look strikingly Earth-like in one respect. Lakes with crinkled shorelines speckle its surface. Today, I'm going to show you how scientists believe there's life on Titan. Before the video begins, please give it a like, and if you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. Now, let's begin. Hints of unexpected chemical activity on Saturn's moon Titan have sparked speculation that there may be alien life there. The new measurements, reported earlier this week, are intriguing. Taken alone, however, they don't constitute evidence of extraterrestrials. New Scientist examines what it will take to settle the question of life on Titan. What's all the fuss about? Titan's surface is a frigid negative 178 degrees Celsius, too cold to sustain liquid water. But life may have been able to find a toehold nevertheless. In 2005, researchers suggested that organisms might survive in this inhospitable environment by breathing hydrogen and eating organic molecules, such as acetylene and ethane. Now, the Cassini spacecraft has found evidence that there's less acetylene on Titan than we would expect, and that levels of hydrogen may be actively being depleted at the surface, raising the possibility that exotic life forms are consuming these substances. Sounds like evidence of life to me. It is consistent with the evidence of a proposed life form that might conceivably eke out an existence on icy Titan. That's a far cry from evidence that there's life on the moon. So what else could be causing the unexpected chemical activity? The most likely explanation is that the model used to estimate the flow of hydrogen in Titan's atmosphere from the Cassini measurements did not accurately simulate conditions on the moon, says Chris McKay of NASA's Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California one of the researchers who first proposed the acetylene-munching organisms. This may mean the model overestimated the amount of hydrogen reaching the surface of Titan, which would make it seem that something is consuming hydrogen when it isn't. Another alternative is that Cassini's measurements are more uncertain than we think. Okay, but what if further models suggest hydrogen really is disappearing? This still wouldn't be evidence of life. There is also the possibility, says McKay, that hydrogen is being consumed through a non-biological process, such as a reaction with acetylene to make methane. It seems unlikely because catalysts such as copper and iron, which are needed for this reaction, are not thought to be present on icy bodies like Titan, nor very effective in extreme cold. But it's certainly a possibility. So what are the next steps? So far, only one model has been used to estimate hydrogen flow on Titan. Once others are used and more Cassini data comes in, we'll have a better idea about whether hydrogen really is being depleted at the surface. If it is, experiments that simulate Titan conditions on Earth could show whether catalysts that help hydrogen and acetylene react with one another might work on Titan. Would that be evidence for life? Well, no. Several missions to Titan's surface would be needed to find unambiguous evidence for life. One of the first steps may be to send a robotic lander equipped with a mass spectrometer, which would look for complex organic molecules, Titan analogs of molecules like ATP and chlorophyll, that could provide additional evidence of life. A team of researchers is asking NASA to fund one such spacecraft, the Titan Mare Explorer. Had it been accepted, it would have launched in 2017. A larger Titan mission that would include a balloon and lander was deferred by NASA last year in favor of first sending two probes to explore Jupiter and its moons. Those lifted off in 2020. The team used the ALMA Observatory to study Titan in 2016. While sifting through the light signatures ALMA collected, they noticed spectra that indicated a strange chemical fingerprint. After searching through a database of all known molecular light signatures, Nixon identified it as cyclopropanilidine, C3H2. Nixon said in a NASA press release, quote, When I realized I was looking at cyclopropanilidine, my first thought was, well, this is really unexpected. Titan is unique in our solar system. It has proved to be a treasure trove of new molecules. In the past, scientists have detected C3H2 in various pockets throughout the galaxy, but only in clouds of gas and dust in the interstellar medium. 
In these regions, conditions are too cold and diffuse to facilitate chemical reactions. In any other environment, cyclopropanilidine easily reacts with other molecules to form different chemical compounds. However, Nixon and his colleagues were able to detect small amounts of cyclopropanilidine around Titan because they were examining the upper layers of the moon's atmosphere, where there are fewer other gases for C3H2 to interact with. Why this is possible for Saturn's largest moon and no other bodies in the solar system remains a mystery. But what it portends could be even more significant. Although C3H2 is not associated with modern-day biological reactions here on Earth, it is an example of what are known as closed-loop molecules, which are important because they form the backbone rings for the nucleobases of DNA and RNA, two compounds that are the very building blocks of life as we know it. Michael Malaska, who once worked in the pharmaceutical industry, decided to change careers and became a JPL planetary scientist so he could study objects like Titan. As he explained, finding molecules like C3H2 is essential to establishing seeing the big picture of Titan. Quote, it's a very weird little molecule, so it's not going to be the kind you learn about in high school chemistry or even undergraduate chemistry. Down here on Earth, it's not going to be something you're going to encounter. Every little piece and part you can discover can help you put together the huge puzzle of all the things going on there. Another closed-loop molecule that has been detected in Titan's atmosphere is benzene, C6H6. Until now, benzene was thought to be the smallest unit of ringed hydrocarbon molecules that could exist in an atmosphere. But that status clearly goes to cyclopropanilidine. What's more, the cyclic nature of both molecules presents researchers with an extra branch of chemistry that may allow for the formation of DNA and RNA. In any case, the role these compounds play is sure to be something that the upcoming Dragonfly mission could investigate. This mission is scheduled to launch in 2027 and consists of a rotorcraft lander drone that will explore Titan's atmosphere and surface to learn more about its rich prebiotic environment and organic chemistry. Among other things, this mission is tasked with answering whether or not Titan could actually support life on its surface and within its methane lakes. This has been a point of speculation and curiosity for decades ever since the Voyager 1 and 2 space probes flew through the Saturn system in 1980 and 1981, respectively. When the Cassini-Huygens mission arrived around Saturn in 2004, what it observed only intrigued scientists further. What these missions found was that despite being very cold, Titan was distinctly Earth-like in some ways. For starters, it has a dense atmosphere, four times as dense as Earth's, that's predominantly composed of nitrogen. No other planet or moon in the solar system can make that claim. Plus, it has a methane cycle that is very similar to Earth's water cycle, complete with lakes and rivers on the surface, evaporation, clouds, and precipitation. There's even evidence that it may have a subsurface ocean of salty water. But most interesting of all is the organic processes at work, where methane and other hydrocarbons in Titan's atmosphere interact with solar radiation, break down, and release a web of organic chemistry that could result in prebiotic surface conditions. This is what has thrust Titan to the top of the list of potential destinations for NASA missions that are looking for past and present life in the solar system. As Rosalie Lopez, a senior research scientist and Titan expert at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory summarized, quote, We're trying to figure out if Titan is habitable, so we want to know what compounds from the atmosphere get to the surface, and then whether that material can get through the ice crust to the ocean below, because we think the ocean is where the habitable conditions are. Another point of interest, which makes Titan such a tempting target for research, is the possibility that the molecules that could be sitting on Titan's surface might be the same as the ones that formed the building blocks of life on Earth, roughly 3.8 billion to 2.5 billion years ago, during the Archean Eon. Earth was a much different place, where the atmosphere was composed predominantly of nitrogen, CO2, methane, and water vapor. Basically, the conditions on Earth during this period are believed to have been similar to those on Titan today. 
Melissa Trainer, a NASA Goddard astrobiologist, is the deputy principal investigator of the Dragonfly mission and the lead investigator of a key instrument it will use to analyze the composition of Titan's surface. As she indicated, quote, we think of Titan as a real-life laboratory, where we can see similar chemistry to that of ancient Earth when life was taking hold here. We'll be looking for bigger molecules in C3H2, but we need to know what's happening in the atmosphere to understand the chemical reactions that lead complex organic molecules to form and rain down to the surface. Thank you for watching, and please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable post alerts to view more of our future videos. After saying that, keep watching our videos, and I'll speak with you in the next one!